the American people are kept completely out of the loop by the news media in this country to hear it told in the past few days everybody would think Syria was a country that was under America's jurisdiction under America's sphere of influence and suddenly Russia has come in to Syria like an invader Russia has a military base in Syria a naval base that has been there since 1971 for the past 44 years Russia has had a naval base in Syria now let's take a look at this map this Russian naval base is in Tartus Russia has long had a military presence in Syria a close ally since 1971 this is Russia's sphere of influence and it is America that is the military newcomer in Syria with an agenda to remove pro-Russian leader Bashar al-Assad and install a pro-American government now please don't misunderstand I'm not saying Putin is the good guy in the white hat and I'm not saying the Russian government is all warm and fuzzy most students of Bible prophecy will agree that Ezekiel's prophecy of an invading mighty army out of the north coming against Israel that involves Russia as its leader and will be fulfilled in these last days so Russia is definitely not the good guy but neither is the leader of the one world government that is also foretold in Bible prophecy recently the Lord led me to get into the eighth and ninth chapters of Ezekiel on the morning of October 7th I got into prayer before I opened the Bible and I was praying about all the bloodshed and the violence in our world and the horrible war in Syria and in Afghanistan where a hospital had just been bombed by American warplanes and then I opened the Bible to my reading for the day and the Lord spoke to me about the things that I had been praying about the Lord draws the attention of the prophet Ezekiel to the people of Judah who are practicing idolatry who are worshiping false gods and filling the land with violence and the Lord commanded one of his angels to mark all the people throughout the land who were faithful to him who were grieving and who were mourning because of the idolatry and because of the violence and the bloodshed that that was being carried out throughout the land God had one of his angels to put a mark on all of the people who were grieving and mourning because of the idolatry and because of the bloodshed and then God judges all of those who do not have the mark who are not grieving and who do not mourn because of the idolatry and the bloodshed that is going on in the land this is the God we serve you know the Bible says God never changes he's the same yesterday the same today and forever he's the same always the God that we serve in the Bible is clearly a God who says put away the evil put away the idolatry put away the murders put away the bloodshed put away the violence that is the God of the Bible that is Jesus Christ who says put away the sword whoever lives by the sword will die by the sword whoever takes up the sword will die by that same sword Jesus says enough of this he said to his disciples enough of this put away the sword you know the fact is the the idea of bombing the world in order to bring peace think of what a foolish and crazy idea that is think of how contrary that is to the gospel of Jesus Christ Jesus is saying go into all the world with the gospel with the good news that saves souls and brings peace to people's heart and brings salvation to their soul 
And what is, but what is the philosophy of America? It's to look out on the world and say, okay, we're going to police the world. We're going to take care of business here. We're going to take care of this country. We're going to do this here and do this here. And how do they do it? By bombing every enemy, everyone that says, oh, well, we don't like this country. We don't like what these people are doing. We're going to get rid of this leader. We're going to replace them. How do you do that? You bomb, you, you take war, you, you do covert activities, you do assassinations, you do all these things. Is that how you're going to bring peace into this world? Do you bring peace through bombs? Do you bring peace through killing? Do you bring peace through wars? No, Jesus knew that would never work. And that's why he said to his disciples, put away the sword, have nothing to do with the sword. We need to ask ourselves, do I have a heart after God's own heart? God says he hates violence. He hates for a man to cover himself with violence. Do we have a heart after God's heart? Do we hate violence? Do we hate bloodshed? Do we hate war? Or do we embrace it? Do we, do we love our guns? Do we love do we think that that's where power is? Power is not in guns. Power is not in bullets. Power is not in war. Power is in submission to Almighty God. Power is in a heart that is bowed down to God and has a heart after God's own heart. That is where the true power is. Power is in submission and devotion to Jesus Christ because in that and in that alone is the answer to our prayers in that and in that alone is victory over sin and death and hell that is the truth that is life and that is the way the spirit of war the spirit of violence that's the spirit of Antichrist we read about the Antichrist in the Bible he's a conqueror who goes out to conquer and make war they ask the question, who can make war with the beast? He's a warmonger and he goes out and conquers the world and brings the world into subjugation through war, through violence, through a military. And that is Antichrist. Christ did not do that. He did just the opposite. He walked the earth in peace. He was humble. He healed. He brought life. He brought healing and mercy and and grace and deliverance from demons and darkness. He had nothing to do with war. He did not carry a sword. He did not go about making war or talking war. His, his kind of fighting was fighting against the devil. And to fight against the devil, you don't do that with a sword in your hand. You do that with the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit. I do believe with all my heart that where we are heading today is a to a place where the people of this world are going to be calling for a strong leader to lead this world and to be the savior of this world. The Antichrist will promise to be the savior of the world, a false Christ. An Antichrist is a false Christ and he will pretend, a pretender, pretending to be the true Christ, he will subjugate the world. and. People are looking for that. That's, that's the flesh. That is the carnal nature to look for a strong man who is going to save the world, who will take control and take charge. And I look for Americans to do that. In 2016, I look for Americans to say, we need a leader who can take charge, you know, rule over things, you know, really get in there and, and fight and, and, and do what needs to be done to take control and, and to rule this world and take control of the world stage and and don't let russia push us around no more and don't let all these terrorists have their way now all that sounds that appeals to the flesh you know oh a strong man's going to save us that's very appealing to the flesh you know we're going to get somebody who's going to make america great again we're going to get somebody who's going to save this country and make everything right again and it's trying to control and rule the world with a strong man. And that is where we're headed. That's what the Bible is clear about. We're headed for an antichrist. Have nothing 
to do with that, have nothing to do with the idea of a political solution to bring world peace, to, to make America great again. That's not going to happen, folks. America is a one nation among many nations, and the Bible says that all nations will bow down and worship the beast. All nations will be brought into this one world government that is coming that the Bible foretells, and all nations will be a part of it. America will be a part of it. And if anything, America will be the leader of it because America is the world leader, the cultural leader, the military leader, the political leader. To answer my earlier question, the Bible says Antichrist is coming and he will build a new world government, a work of the devil, a work of world unity. And that is in progress today. The spirit of Antichrist is already at work. And any nation that stands in the way of a one world order must be demonized. Now, Syria and Russia and Iran and North Korea, these are not good guys. But we must understand the one world order that is coming, the one world order of a strong man, the Antichrist, is not good either. The gods of the nations are idols and the world is on board a new world order. The politicians are on board, the corporations, the news media, all of the establishment. And war is the vehicle they are riding. You know, as a Christian, we're not at war with anybody. Christians are the, the only people in this world that are truly not at war with anybody. We are at peace and we are looking to make peace between other people and God. We want people to come to Christ and have peace with God. We're not at war with anybody. I don't care what they're doing. I don't care how evil they are. I don't care how wicked and, and cruel and violent they are. We are not, as Christians, we're not called to be at war with them or with anybody. We are called to win them to Christ. You may say, well, there's no way those people are going to come to Christ. Paul, the Apostle Paul, was a murderer who was persecuting Christians. God got him on his knees and he came to Christ. Anybody is a potential candidate to come to Christ. Anybody may be saved tomorrow. We do not know who's going to be saved, but we are not at war with anybody. We are looking to save souls, to win them to Jesus Christ. The God of the Bible says that you must obey God and not man. Yes, we are called to obey the laws of the land as long as they do not contradict the Bible. But folks, that is not America today. America is telling us in many ways you must go with America, not the God of the Bible. You must go with abortion because abortion is the law of the land. You must go with if two men want to get married, two women want to get married. You must go with that because that is the law of the land. Forget about the Bible. Just go with the law of the land. When you wave that American flag today, you are waving a flag that stands for abortion, same-sex marriage, and militarism, dropping bombs on people all over the world. You may be thinking, well, oh, that flag to me stands for liberty and freedom. Liberty and freedom, folks, is there is biblical liberty and there is worldly liberty. There is a biblical freedom and there is a worldly freedom. And America is in the camp of that worldly liberty and freedom, not in the camp of biblical liberty and freedom. Now, what's the difference? Well, biblical liberty and biblical freedom is to be free from sin. It's to have the liberty to obey God, the liberty to live under God and walk with God to be free of sin, free of death, free of hell. But worldly liberty is saying, I will do as I will. I, I am free. I have liberty. I can do what I want to do. I can have an abortion. I can marry a person of the same sex. 
May the Lord help his people to stand with him in these last days, to say no to worldly liberty, to say no to this world and the ways of the world. I'd like to have a word of prayer with you and then ask you to please do one small thing in response to this chat. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray for your people today. May we just draw nearer to you and get rid of our idols, get rid of all the things that hinder us, and just draw near to you and be close to you and grow in your word and grow in prayer, grow in closeness to you. This is our heart's desire, Lord God, to just be closer to you each day and to win that lost soul to Christ, to win them, Lord, and give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you would like to send me a word of encouragement, could you please click the subscribe button and maybe even leave a little comment below this video. Thank you so very much.